My friends, you might have heard people say that life is like a roller coaster. It might sound a bit overused, but it's true. Life has its ups and downs. As Christians, we aren't shielded from life's difficulties. In fact, some say we face more challenges than those who aren't Christians. The Bible acknowledges this reality. In Psalms 34 verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I'm telling you this not to discourage you, but to give you a grounded perspective. Following Jesus doesn't mean life will be problem free. Jesus himself warned us in John 16 verse 33 that we will encounter troubles in this world. The apostles and Jesus remind us throughout scripture that as Christians, we will face trials and persecution. They tell us this not to make us miserable, but to remind us of our reality and encourage us to stay strong in our faith. Jesus, after warning us about the challenges we'll face, also tells us to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. So whatever you're going through, take heart. In Jesus, you are an overcomer. Things might be tough now, but have faith in the Lord. He will see you through. When times are tough, God wants us to pray earnestly. Hardships often drive us to seek God more passionately. When we feel weak and helpless, we realize how much we need God's intervention. Don't let Satan deceive you into thinking God doesn't care or won't help. Turn to him in prayer. James 5 verse 13 advises us, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. The Bible is full of examples of people praying during difficult times. Take Hezekiah, for instance. When he was told he would die, he prayed to the Lord and God extended his life. Hannah, too, prayed fervently for a child, and God answered her prayer with Samuel, who became a great prophet. So, when hardships come your way, go to God. Seek Him in prayer. He hears, He cares, and He can bring you through even the toughest situations. The apostles faced their share of suffering and challenges, too. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison for preaching about Jesus. Instead of despairing, they prayed and sang hymns to God. Their worship was so powerful that it caused an earthquake, loosening their chains. This event led to the prison guard and his family believing in Jesus and being saved. Later, the apostles were released from prison, showing the incredible power of prayer. If Hezekiah could pray after receiving a death sentence, Hannah dared to ask God for a child, and Paul and Silas praised God in prison after being beaten. What stops us from praying in difficult situations? All these people were driven to pray because of the trials they faced. Let's be encouraged to do the same when we encounter tough times. Instead of feeling hopeless or discouraged, let's run to Jesus. He has overcome the world, and he is our refuge and strength. Jesus Christ is our comforter and our help in times of trouble. He wants us to turn to him first in all circumstances, not just as a last resort. Although we have emotions and feelings, God wants our commitment and faith. He wants us to trust him completely. Paul advises us in Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, not to be anxious, but to pray about everything with thanksgiving, laying our requests before God. His peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. We can trust that God's peace will sustain us through life's hardships. Lay all your burdens at Jesus' feet and watch your worries fade away, replaced by his incredible peace. Lord Jesus, you deserve all our praise. Your mercy and grace will lift us up when troubles weigh us down. By your mercy and grace, we will overcome every situation, no matter how tragic or heartbreaking. We look to you for strength and guidance. Lord, through your mercy and grace, we are victorious. May your divine plan be fulfilled in my life. If the challenges I face are meant to shape and mold me according to your will, let it be done. If they are meant to strengthen my faith and character, let your will be done. 
if they are meant to teach me patience, prayerfulness, and gratitude, let your will be done. Father, whatever purpose you have for allowing difficulties in my life, accomplish it in me. Transform me, renew me, and teach me. I surrender to you, Lord. Psalm 102, verse 1 to 2 says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me on the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily when I call. Lord, hear our cry when we face trials and troubles. Deliver us and be our help. James 1 verse 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Father, if I encounter tough times, may it all be for your glory. Use challenges to build my character and strengthen my faith. Help me understand that trials may come to promote spiritual growth and deepen my prayer life. Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might he increases strength. In you, Lord, I find victory. Only through you can I overcome it. Without you, Lord Jesus, there are battles I cannot fight on my own. Whether I am in a storm, valley, or shadow of death, be with me always. Whether I face a fiery furnace or the den of lions, raise up your protection. When the enemy attacks like a flood, I look to you for deliverance. Psalm 121 verse 7 to 8 says, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. I hold on to your promise, Lord, that you will protect me from all evil and preserve my life. Despite daunting challenges, I am at peace knowing you are with me. Lord Jesus, you promised never to leave me or forsake me. So even when things seem against me, I will rely on you. Whether I face danger or tough times, you are faithful and I trust you will be with me and protect me. May you be glorified forever and ever. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. James 4 verse 14 says, you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Your life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Think about that. We are like a vapor here for a short time in the grand scheme of eternity. Tomorrow is not promised. It's not in our hands. At any moment, the Lord could call us home. Are you living with urgency for the things of Christ? If you believe tomorrow is not guaranteed, you will live with purpose. Everything should be done with eternity in mind. Every second, minute, and hour brings us closer to the time we will stand before God and account for our lives. Now is the time to build a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Now is the time to work and serve God's kingdom. Now is the time to fully surrender to Jesus Christ. Don't wait any longer. There is no reason to delay. In Him there is joy and eternal life. When you stop resisting God and let Him change your life, you will experience true freedom. Jesus satisfies every hunger, quenches every thirst, and fills the deepest longings of your soul. Come to Him today. The Lord is patient and willing to forgive those who come to Him with a humble and contrite heart. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, It is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. With this in mind, live with urgency. Time is ticking. Sooner or later, we will stand before the Lord, or He will return to take His church away. We need to live mindful that we will be accountable for what we did for Jesus and what we didn't do. Can you say your life produced good fruit for God's kingdom? Can you say that you lived with eternity in mind? Many people waste their lives on temporary things like money, power, and relationships. But God cares about the state of your heart. What matters is living according to God's word and putting to God's word and putting Jesus Christ first. At the end of your life, the Lord won't ask about your wealth, 
friends, or even good deeds. He will ask who you trusted for your eternal salvation. Who did you serve? Who did you serve? Who did you love with all your heart, mind, and soul? The only answer is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love and saving grace. Your love accepts me even in my sin and calls me to repentance. Thank you for your mercy, which grants me eternal life and saves me from damnation. Because of your mercy, I look forward to everlasting joy in your presence. Titus 2 verse 11 to 14 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Lord Jesus, you are our blessed hope. Help me to live a godly life in this age where sin is rampant and love has grown cold. Holy Spirit, keep the fire of Christ burning brightly in my heart. Help me not to grow cold or lukewarm in my faith. Keep me from being tempted or drawn into the ways of this world. Give me the grace and strength to live an upright and pure life showing the love of Jesus to everyone. Let my life be a living testimony of God's amazing grace and eternal mercies. Amid all the distractions in this world, help me stay focused on you, King Jesus. You are my blessed hope. Let my heart always be filled with the expectation of your return. Mark 13 verse 32 to 33 says, but about that day or hour, no one knows not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. Father, help me to always be on guard against the deceptions and distractions of this world. Keep me alert, knowing that you could return at any time. Lord Jesus, it is my heart's desire to spend eternity with you and to live this life for your glory. Holy Spirit, please, Help me stay on the narrow path and carry my cross so I can be with my Savior forever. I praise your holy name and thank you for hearing my prayer. Be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The devil targets our hearts, which is why the Bible tells us to guard our hearts above all else, for everything we do flows from it. Are you careful about what you allow into your heart? What is the condition of your heart? Hebrews 3 verse 15 says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. But what does it mean to have a hardened heart? Why would the devil want your heart to be hardened by sin? A hardened heart is spiritually blind and insensitive to the things of the Lord. Such a person focuses only on their own desires, not on God's will. A hardened heart rejects God. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Perhaps the devil's main goal is to stop you from obeying this command. He wants to prevent you from giving God your whole heart. So the enemy tempts and distracts you subtly, leading your desires away from God. He dangles people things and desires that aren't of God in front of you, hoping to create a false God that you don't even realize you're worshiping. The devil also targets our bodies. Romans 12 verse 1 says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Our bodies should be given to the Lord as instruments through which he can work. But the enemy tempts us to defile our bodies, mainly through sexual immorality. From the beginning of time until now, many people have overcome great trials and tests of faith only to fall because of sexual sin. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. 
All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Sexual sin is so serious that the Bible tells us to flee from it. This shows how crucial it is to avoid sexual immorality. Dear listener, avoid sexual sin completely. Flee from it because if you allow it into your life, the devil will gain a foothold and only Jesus can break those chains. Now, let's talk about another area the devil targets, your words. Your speech can cause a lot of damage if not controlled by God. The enemy wants you to gossip, complain, and speak negatively or with profanity because he knows the power of your words. But remember, our mouths should be declaring God's word, testifying to his goodness, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. In summary, be aware of the areas the enemy targets, your heart, body, and words. Know the enemy's tricks, but don't be afraid. No matter how the devil attacks, Jesus Christ can protect, defend, and deliver you. This happens when you run to him and seek the Lord. Stay vigilant and aware. Now, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you because you are awesome and mighty. You've said in your words, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Open our hearts to you, Lord. Purge us of all sin and set us free from pride, anger, and unforgiveness. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be transformed in mind and heart. Help us to strive to be like you. Amen. Lord, give us a strong and pure passion to follow you and to imitate Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Lord Jesus, I pray that your blood will wash us clean. Let us not have a proud look, but give us a humble heart. Let us not have a lying tongue. Instead, let our lips be full of praise for you. May no corrupt talk come from our mouths. As Psalm 141 verse 3 says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Touch my life, Lord Jesus, and remove this heart of stone. Take away this wicked and deceitful heart and give me a new heart one with new desires and a passion for godly things. Help me realize my daily need for you. Give me a heart that chases after godliness and is drawn to your presence. Psalm 19 verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I pray that the way I live, walk, and talk May all be led by the Holy Spirit. Take all of me, my actions, thoughts, and energy, and may it all be pleasing to you. I want everything to be for your glory. Holy Spirit, lead me, teach me, and help me, so that all I do glorifies the Lord. Help me become an imitator of Christ. Teach me to walk in love and practice righteousness. King Jesus, rule my life. Have the final say in everything I do. I submit to you. You are my number one, my everything. I bless your precious name and thank you for hearing my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand for us to do. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Hebrews 12 verse two says, looking unto Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Consider this. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords, while the devil is the father of lies and master of evil. There are angels who protect, minister, and praise God, but there are also demons that seek to hinder God's work. There are people used by God, true servants of his kingdom who spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Conversely, the devil has his agents, people driven by demonic spirits. I came across a video by a man named James Kearney. In it, he discusses spiritual warfare. They helped someone leave witchcraft and come to Christ, which led to an entire group of witches targeting this pastor. The lesson here is that the devil won't come after you until you start doing God's work. When you begin to preach or minister to others and make a positive impact, only then will Satan see you as a threat. This is what happened in the video. We need to be aware that just because we don't see or hear about it doesn't mean it's not happening. The devil is at work, but don't fear or be discouraged because God is also at work, protecting and defending his children. For many, this might be surprising to hear, but the Bible warns us repeatedly about the devil's wickedness. In John 10 verse 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And 1 Peter 5 verse 8 tells us, Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Dear listener, I bring this up not to make you afraid, but to awaken you to the reality of evil in this world. Jesus Christ says in Matthew 16 verse 18, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is something to declare and proclaim. The gates of hell will not prevail in my home, my children's lives, my marriage, or my life. These are bold words to the devil, telling him that his plans are destroyed in Jesus' name. Whatever scheme he had for my life is rendered useless by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, and by my testimony. I want to encourage you not to fear. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. This is a powerful verse for believers to speak over themselves. Declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is your heritage from the Lord, this scripture confirms that Jesus Christ is our protector. He turns what was meant for evil into good. He reverses every curse, blocks every spell, and nullifies every negative word spoken over your life. He directs your path. Jesus will use your enemies as a footstool to elevate you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen to that. Let this be so in my life. Lord, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I fully agree with this promise, Lord Jesus. Friends, this is a promise we should hold dear. The world can be a frightening place without God, and people can be hurtful whether you have God or not. But I want to uplift you and strengthen your faith. Do not fear, no weapon whether in the form of words, actions, or anything else, will succeed against you. Believe that God's promises are true and meant for you. The Bible says, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We don't defeat the devil by being stronger, smarter, or faster. We defeat him by calling upon the name he cannot stand. Jesus, Jesus is the light that drives out darkness. At the name of Jesus, Satan must flee, demons tremble, and all creation bows down. Christ has ultimate authority over everything. 
and he has promised to be with us in every struggle. Sometimes we can't avoid life's difficulties. We may be surrounded by evil and we may not be able to change our circumstances. But if we walk by faith, not by sight, we will see God's hand protecting us. God has already declared that no weapon formed against us shall stand. And if he is for us, who can be against us? Let us pray. Father, I pray that we, your children, would be aware of the unseen battle before us. Let us not be complacent or procrastinate. Help us stay awake in this war and fight in prayer with the divine power that comes only from you. I bless your name and am grateful that you hear our prayers. Increase my knowledge of your ways and your will for my life. Give me wisdom and understanding. Teach me to walk with the eyes of faith and discernment. Open our eyes to see the traps set by the devil and expose his hiding places. Pour out your spirit over our lives, Lord, and teach us how to apply your word every day. Help me see your power and the truth in your words. Hosea 4 verse 6 says that people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. I pray that I will not fall into this category. Expose the schemes of the devil through divine revelations. Remove the scales from my eyes so I can see the tricks and deceptions of this world. Lord, help me never to conform to the wicked ways of this world, which lead to death and destruction. Your way leads to everlasting life. I may face ridicule and mockery or find myself in uncomfortable situations, but I know my reward in heaven will be greater. Father, help me be on guard against worldly traps. Don't let me fall into habits that grieve your Holy Spirit or act in ways that harm my witness for Christ. Often, Satan disguises sin as something good and desirable. Help me not only recognize these works of darkness, but also expose them and warn others so they won't be caught unaware. Give me the courage and strength to stand against evil whenever I see it. Build within me a character that is fully equipped and bold to stand for the gospel. The only thing with the power to transform lives and hearts in this dark and sinful world. Amen. Lord, begin the transformation in my mind. Change my desires so I no longer think or act like the world, but instead follow Christ's example in all I do. Replace bitterness with love and jealousy with gratitude. Break me of every worldly habit and attitude and teach me to obey you. May your Holy Spirit fill me and help me discern your perfect will for my life. Lord Jesus, grant me the gift of discernment so I can be alert and watchful. Open my ears and eyes to recognize the enemy's tricks and traps. Your word says in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 5, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not worldly, but have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Give me a heart sensitive to your voice and ears that hear you always. I praise your name for hearing this prayer. Be glorified in my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Jesus said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the house of the Lord is finished. Jeremiah 10 verse 6 says, No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. If you find yourself in intense spiritual warfare or under attack from the enemy, remember this, whatever you need can be found in the name of Jesus Christ. His name is mighty in power. 
When Peter in the book of Acts saw a lame beggar at the temple gates, he said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. The beggar wanted money or food, but Peter gave him something far more valuable, the name of Jesus, which brought divine healing and restoration. Every name has significance. A son's name is special to his mother. A famous entertainer's name is unmistakable to fans. A president's name is respected in their country, and names of historical figures, especially those who committed terrible crimes, evoke strong emotions. Every name carries weight, whether for good or evil, but above all, the name of Jesus carries the greatest significance and power. There is one name above all others, and that name is Jesus Christ. Only his name brings salvation and opens paths where none seem to exist. Jesus Christ alone brings life to dead situations. Even if you feel outnumbered, outmatched, or outsmarted by your enemies, believing in the name of Jesus gives you power and victory. If you're facing a tough situation affecting your peace of mind, remember that everything you need is found in Jesus Christ's name. If you're under attack and nothing else has worked, now is the time to stand firm and trust in the power of Jesus of blood. His name can break every bondage, bring freedom, and defeat any evil hold. Stand confidently in righteousness and faith. Psalm 56 verse 3 assures us, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Trusting in the Lord allows us to stand firm against worldly traps and live according to his ways, which lead to everlasting life. Let's remember the promise in Psalm 31 verse 24 to be strong and let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord, as children of God, it's time to stand tall, lift high his banner, and declare his name above all. Let's approach God's throne in prayer, laying our troubles and cares at his feet. There is no name greater than Jesus Christ who saves, heals, and restores. We praise your holy name, Lord, acknowledging that there is no other name that saves, heals brokenness, or restores joy like Jesus Christ's name. We declare you as the author and finisher of our faith, the risen and almighty one. Every sickness bows, every disease flees, and every chain breaks at the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we echo the blessing from Psalm 20 over our lives. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he fulfill all your petitions. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord God who is, who was, and who is to come. The Almighty, we honor you, Lord, and thank you for hearing our prayer. Amen. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notified anytime we post a new video. God bless you. Amen.